Um, let me, uh, we're going to talk again about the Holy Spirit, the spiritual life. Let me give you a little Israel update. I want to pray this morning for the hostages. There are around 210 hostages, at least 210 hostages. I think 11 of those are Americans. They've just been on my heart all week. I can't even imagine uh, being a hostage of Hamas, of those brutal people, or having a family member who is a hostage. Um, the uh, war in Israel is entering into its third week. I talked to Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Kim this morning. They just returned from England. Uh, they were over there ministering to a group of churches. They flew into London. I believe they flew into London last Friday or Saturday. Uh, in London, there were pro-Palestinian uh, demonstrations going on throughout London. Uh, no pro-Israel demonstrations that they saw. And they said on BBC, on television over in England, there's not one word of support for Israel. It's all pro-Palestinian. And so the, uh, we have two, uh, United States, thankfully we are standing behind Israel militarily. And there are two carrier strike groups in the Mediterranean right now, the strike group of Gerald Ford and also uh, I think Eisenhower. Uh, very, very significant for that many forces to be there, that much military power to be there. Uh, and also this morning, our Secretary of Defense, uh, Lloyd Austin, is calling up more troops to be ready to go to the Middle East. Very, very tense situation over there. Gaza, it looks like the ground operation in Gaza uh, is about to begin here pretty quick. That could be a very, very dangerous situation. It is a very dangerous situation uh, for the Israeli Defense Forces. We need to be praying for them. Um, the Lebanon, in Lebanon, the Hezbollah has been firing rockets all week long under the threshold of war, but is still just harassment in its beginnings of what could become another front in the war. Hezbollah has 150,000 rockets and missiles. Gaza's rockets are just, they just lob them up. They're not laser guided. Hezbollah's, many of them are laser guided. They're very precise. And they represent a very, very strong threat on the northern front. Uh, the Iranians have their uh, militias in Syria and also Iraq, uh, and they could strike at any moment. And there have been skirmishes up there in the north. Of course, the West Bank, which is Judea and Samaria, they also have Palestinian terrorists in the West Bank. And in Yemen, one of our warships this week had a nine-hour ordeal with the Sudi forces, the Houthi forces in Yemen, rebel forces that are backed by Iran shooting I believe it was 15 drones and four missiles that we, knocked, that we shot down. Uh, and so it's uh, the presence of the U.S. military over there, I believe, is keeping uh, all that war from happening uh, in, a, in an attack. Iran is behind this. Uh, the Iranians, uh, by the way, my, I have my podcast. We have endtimes.com, Tipping Point Pro Prophecy Podcast. This Wednesday, I have uh, Dr. Hormuz Shariat who is the Billy Graham of Iran. He is the one, the greatest revival in the world right now is happening in Iran and in the Middle East. And the one who's leading that, he'll be on my podcast this coming Wednesday. And we're talking about Iran, we're talking about Israel. His brother was killed by the Iranians. And so he, he has a, a very you know, clear perspective on the Iranians and what they're doing there. So we need to be praying as a church for the nation of Israel. And someone asked me this week, you know, if, can a Jew be saved just by being a Jew? Uh, are, are Jews saved by being a part of Israel or whatever? No, they're not. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. That's in John 14. He said that to an audience of Jews. Jews cannot be saved without receiving Jesus Christ as their Messiah, just like us. But they're special by covenant. God made a covenant with Abraham. And God said, this is a covenant to all your generations that are going to come after you. And so the Israelis, the Jewish people, God loves the Palestinians. God loves the Arabs. God loves the Persians. God loves the Russians. God loves the North Koreans. God loves all people. Aren't you thankful for that? But there's one group of people, special by covenant, to God on the earth, and it's the nation of Israel. And God still has that covenant with them. And God told Abraham, I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you. That is also still a, a true promise to this day. So we, we stand by Israel. They did not attack Hamas. They were attacked. And children were beheaded. The old men and women were killed and taken hostage. These are savage people. And they, by the way, they were taking uh, drugs to heighten their senses and to help them to be more ruthless. They were under the influence of drugs when they were making these attacks. So this is a heinous attack. 
that they're responding to there. But now the entire world is, what you're seeing is you're seeing just, uh, uh, you know, pe people choosing sides. And this is an opportunity where people's hearts are being revealed. And by the way, the Bible, and of course I teach Bible prophecy, the last scene of human history, according to Zechariah chapter 12, Zechariah chapter 14, Revelation chapter 19, and other places, the last scene of human history is the entire world marches against Israel. And that's the second coming. When Jesus returns at the second coming, all the nations have gathered against Jerusalem and marched against them. Isn't that the most ridiculous prophecy on earth written 2,500 years ago that would say in the very end times there would be this tiny little nation in the Middle East that would garner all the world's attention and all the world would turn against it? And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. And let me tell you the significance of this. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And so Jesus said, when you see these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your head, your redemption is drawing near. And so one of the reasons that that is so important for us is because the end of the world is not going to come. The rapture is going to come. And we're going to go to be with Jesus. And then the end of the world is going to come. And we're going to return with Jesus in the second coming. So Jesus said, don't get all upset. Don't get all down and depressed when you see these things happening. Look up and lift up your head. Your redemption is drawing near. And redemption, by the way, means we get everything back. When Jesus returns, the instant that Jesus returns, we get new bodies. I'm 70 years old. I want a new body. Okay. We get to be with Jesus. We got kicked out of the house 6,000 years ago when Adam and Eve sinned. We get to go back home and be with Jesus. We get our authority back. We're going to rule and reign with Jesus for 1,000 years. Redemption, the best day of your life is the day that Jesus returns. And every single thing we're seeing right now is telling us that Jesus is about to return. I don't know the day or the hour, but I know that the things the Bible said would, happening, would happen are happening. So I want us to pray for Israel and I want us to pray for the hostages and for their families. Father, in the name of Jesus, you're the God of Israel. You're the God who sees them and holds them. And Lord, we pray right now that you would do miracles for them. You would do miracles for them. Something that man cannot do. Through the history of Israel, you've done miracles for them. You led them out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And Lord, you've done miracles in protecting them. And now, Lord, we pray for your protection on the nation of Israel and the Jewish people all over the world. And specifically right now, we pray for the hostages of Hamas. We thank you for the two that were set free this week. We pray for all of them to be rescued today in Jesus' name. Miraculously, give the Israeli Defense Forces just supernatural uh, ability and strength and discernment in fighting these battles and in rescuing these hostages. And we thank you and praise you for that, Lord. We pray for the Israeli Defense Forces. We pray for President uh, or Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the Knesset, the Israeli people. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them in a supernatural way. And we don't know what's going to happen next, Lord, but you do. And Lord, the people of Iran are precious people, but their leaders are evil people. And we pray against the evil that is being plotted against Israel right now in the name of Jesus. We pray against the evil people in Hamas and Hezbollah. All, all across the Middle East, the evil people that are plotting against Israel, we pray that you would foil their plans and turn their evil back on them that they would be destroyed by the very plans that they're making. And Lord, we stand in the gap today for Israel, your people, special to you by covenant, and we're believing you, God, to act today on their behalf in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. I had on my podcast this last week, uh, Michelle Bachman, who is a congresswoman from Minnesota. Uh, she's now the president of the School of Government of Regent University. And she said that she had a meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu she was on the, on the security committee of the Congress, and she had a private meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu. And at the end of the meeting, uh, he walked up to her and said, let me, let me explain to you the Israeli foreign policy. And she said, okay. He said, we require miracles. And the only way we survive is by miracles. He said, if you want to understand our foreign policy, you have to understand miracles. And that's what we're saying right now. They will survive. We know the end of the story. God is with them.